Hi, Upper School students. It's great to see you. Hope you're doing well. We are nearing the presidential election, a very exciting time in American democracy. And just last week, we had the third presidential debate in Nashville, Tennessee. And as I was listening to and following the debate, I was also thinking back to the last time I was in Nashville. I don't know if you've been to Nashville, but it's a really wonderful city. It's known as Athens of the South an interesting kind of moniker. And to a testament to Nashville's tribute to democracy, they built in 1897 a Parthenon, a replica of the Greek Parthenon in Centennial Park. It's been there since 1897, and it's a testament to kind of the city's views on democracy and democratic ideals. And I remember visiting that site and just being kind of overwhelmed by this tremendous feat of architecture, but also impressed in it and empowered by the tribute to democracy. And I often think how often we take democracy for granted, the process of voting, what these elections are. And so it's really an interesting and inspiring time, despite some of the vitriol that's out in our political culture right now. As I was outside the Parthenon, I walked up to another tribute to democracy, and that is a series of statues that pay homage to the suffragists who helped pass the 19th Amendment to the Constitution in 1920. Tennessee was the 36th state that ratified it. They were the one that really made it law and part of our Constitution. And it's a really wonderful tribute to an important milestone in American democracy. We're celebrating that milestone this year in 2020 as it's the 100th anniversary. Later on, as I went through Nashville, I was reminded of the importance this city had in the civil rights movement just some 30 years later. In the 1960s, interestingly enough, Nashville became the center of a lot of student sit-ins and the protests against Jim Crow segregation in diners and restaurants. While North Carolina students really kicked off the sit-in movement, it was in Nashville that Martin Luther King came in 1960s to say, I came to not inspire, but instead to be inspired. And as I kept walking through Nashville and thinking about democracy, I too was inspired. And I realize, though, that right now, not everyone's really inspired by this election. They may be inspired and enthused to vote a certain way, but the process of democracy has been rather, uh, well, difficult and complicated. A couple of days ago, I was walking through campus, and I bumped into three seniors. And they were lamenting how, as much as they liked talking about politics, they were finding it really difficult to talk about politics with their friends. And it's understandable. Again, tensions are high in our country. People are disagreeing, and often so, not in a very diplomatic manner. And that kind of saddened me to hear that some of these seniors were struggling with even broaching the conversation about important policy issues with their friends because they felt that those exchanges were very personal. So I tried to remind them of a couple things, and this is my offering to you today. That number one, when you're having conversations about politics, make sure that you're coming from it from a listening stance. Try to listen to your friends, listen to each other. We can learn a lot by listening. I tried to also remind them that some of the fiercest political ideologues, and some of them that have even sat on our Supreme Court, like Antonin Scalia and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, couldn't be more different ideologically speaking. But they were best friends. They went to the opera together, they traveled together, they worked together. And that, I tried to remind these students that we can model that type of civil behavior to each other and with each other, despite the rancor and despite the differences that we're gonna have in important policies. So as we were talking, I wanted to remind them again that you can disagree without being disagreeable. That you can argue like you're right, but you can listen like you're wrong. And I also reminded them of the story of Epictetus, a Greek who in the first century wrote of encountering a lost traveler, lost on their road. And Epictetus argued that when you find someone that's lost, and maybe this was how he was speaking metaphorically, rather than castigate them, rather than chide them for not knowing which way they're going, is to listen, to provide them gentle instructions, to care for them, and to help guide them down the path. And I think we can take that model as an, maybe an important one, as we listen to each other, as we debate each other, and, and as we help each other kind of see the roads that we're taking in this political sphere. So students, as we look forward to next Tuesday's election, let's make sure that we treat each other with civility, care, and respect.